Hi, I'm Darian Graham-Smith, PC Pro's Technical Editor. I'm Barry Collins, Editor of PC Pro, and this is the Lytro Lightfield Camera. A rather unusual looking device, I think you'll agree? Yes, it doesn't look much like a camera at all, to be honest. It looks like it fell off a Soviet convoy, if you ask me. But ha So how does this work? Um, well, what's special about this camera is that, unlike a normal uh, sensor, uh, which just records the intensity of the light coming through the lens, the sensor in the Lytro uh, records the angle at which light uh, hits the sensor. Now, that may not sound very useful, but what it means is that the pictures you take contain a sort of extra dimension of uh, focusing information. And in practice, what that means is you can take a picture and then focus it afterwards. That might sound a bit hard to understand, so just to demonstrate, um, I've got a picture here, um, and you can see uh, if I click here, uh, then we can bring the, the front uh, area of the, of the image into view, and then we just click here, and from exactly the same file, um, now you can see obviously that the rear part of the picture is, is sharp and in focus. It's a neat trick, but I do wonder when you're ever going to find reason to use it, especially with the images that come out so low resolution that you really only could use them on social networking sites. Yeah, the, the images it takes are, I think, they're 1,024 square, um, and despite that, uh, well, comparatively limited resolution, the files it generates, because they contain so much uh, light field information, are actually about 15 megabytes in size. Uh, so it's not the most practical of devices. And then we come to actually trying to take pictures with the device. And this oblong shape is just awkward to hold. If you try and press the shutter button on the top here, your thumb sort of naturally rests where the power button is on the bottom. And I find that I end up switching the device off when I'm trying to take a photo. Yeah, it clearly comes across as a proof of concept and a rather early one at that. Um, but I still think the technology is exciting. I like the idea that maybe in a few years this kind of thing could be possible with a regular DSLR. Nevertheless, £400 for a device like this today, I just don't think offers value for money. The screen is terrible, the ergonomics are, are really uncomfortable to use as a camera, and I just don't think the results are that impressive right now. No, I think it's fair to say that neither of us will be buying this camera in the short term. Click to subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back every Wednesday for new hot hardware videos.